Hi, this is Lisa, and I'm here to show you today how to access and use the progress monitoring tools found inside of SLP Toolkit. So everything that involves a test is specifically related to a student. So that is where you need to go in order to access any of the tests, because once you open a test, it will be assigned to that specific student. So let's go ahead and open Allison. What that does is moves us from our caseload screen specifically to the student dashboard screen. And you can verify that you have the correct student by looking up here. So the idea of doing any kind of progress monitoring is that you can get a baseline score on how a student's doing on a goal that you wanna work on for the annual IEP, and then pull up that same test to determine progress over the length of that entire IEP. So I might have given her a present level assessment and figured out that some of her particular needs were around vocabulary. Maybe she's having difficulty with synonyms or parts of a whole or functions of objects. Whatever the case may be, I need to start a new test for her to get a baseline on that skill. So all I need to do is select new progress monitor. I can filter by category, but for me, it tends to be easier if I go ahead and do a search term for that. So you'll notice for synonyms that we have different levels, and these are leveled vocabulary for a skill that you would expect for kindergarten through high school, but the vocabulary will be much different for a kindergarten student than a high school student. So level one is for kindergarten. You might also see some tests that are geared for level zero, which is preschool. Level two is first and second grade. Level three is for third through fifth level four is sixth through eighth, and level five is high school. And don't worry about memorizing that. I'll show you in our knowledge base where you can find that later on. But I will go ahead and create a new test for Allison. And this is what you'll see when you log in. You'll see the list of stimulus items on the test that you're administering. And as you give it to the student, you're going to either want a thumbs up if you get a correct response or flag if the answer is incorrect. And anytime you mark an item, either as correct or incorrect, you'll see this notes field populate that maybe you can put in the response and later analyze that to help you direct your therapy. So you can take notes on each of the stimulus items or you can take notes down at the bottom, whichever works for you. So as I am scoring, everything is auto saving for me. And you can notice that up in the top right corner, it's saying saving. And wait till you see that all changes are saved before closing out, because that is your assurance that it has indeed saved for you. So over here, this is going to be your baseline score then for your IEP. So this will have a history here of any time you give this test. So when it come progress report time, you don't have to search for that test again. All you need to do is do a new test run and re-administer that test. So this is really nice because it will give you an idea of progress over time as you're going through this and giving the same test to Allison for her progress report. I will close out of here and you can see the performance. So because we're doing both of these today, it's kind of hard to decipher, but usually these will align with whenever your progress reports are due. So she went from 30% on a baseline to 50%, and then it becomes really easy just to plot this information, whether it be the baseline into the IEP itself, or as you're completing progress reports, you can open up your IEP software and enter in that score and, and relay the progress that way. So um, what's awesome too is that you can print these out and share with parents. So you'll see any list of any tests that are here. And under the test name, there is this actions button that will allow you, as you already saw, to do a new test run, but you can also graph. And so what this shows us is performance over time. And it's really nice to have these when you're going into a meeting because to have something that has a visual representation like this is a lot more meaningful often for parents than just the numbers themselves. And you'll also get a nice printout of the stimulus items. So you even have the option of, at the time that you create the IEP, you can print this page out with the baseline score and attach it to the IEP in case that student moves and you want the new SLP to have the same test to measure progress that you used. Um, the other thing I wanna show you is that you can edit these. So sometimes people like to match these up that with the exact date of the end of your grading period. So maybe this was the date that I created the IEP, but then 
our grading period really ends on April 27th. So I want to make sure that I can note that here. So when I close out of there, you'll see that it will show you the tested on date. So that is completely editable. You can also delete tests from here. So if you ever open a test by accident, you're like, oh no, I really don't even care about this. Or maybe sometimes people open the wrong or the test that is correct, but for the wrong student, and you want to delete that test run, you can delete it permanently. Just know that anytime you use those actions, archive or delete, it will um, delete, will permanently delete your data. So be very sure that you want to delete that. If it's something like the IEP is now coming due for its next annual review and you don't need this particular progress monitoring tool anymore, I would opt for archive because it will take it off your active list. But if you ever need to access that information in the future, you can pull that up in your archive data folder for that student. So one more quick thing I want to show you with progress monitoring is the ability to show images. So let's say this student is working on CH and I want to pull this up and this is a test that has images associated with it. So you are able to click on this and expand it and show that to the student, but it then becomes pretty awkward if you want to take notes or score it, then um, it can just make the process a little clunkier. So what we've done in lieu of having you print out any images separately is we've created a companion app. And if you go to um, app.slptoolkit.com forward slash viewer, it will take you to our companion image viewer. And so you will be asked to log in with the same credentials that you use to log into the app itself. And any test that you have open for any student on your caseload will be listed here in alphabetical order. So if I want the student to see the CH images, I can log in to this URL on something like an iPad or even a smartphone and give that to the student. So all they see are the images as I go through and take notes and do my scoring. So that is it in a nutshell. This is a really great way to get progress monitoring done because you always know you have the test you need on hand since everything is stored digitally. There are also some great rubrics that are built into here as well that will help measure those skills that are not as concrete as something like a CH sound. And if you have any questions as you get into the program, please do not hesitate to reach out. You can reach us anytime by email at hello at slptoolkit.com. You can also get many answers to the questions you have by clicking on our knowledge base, which is this little question mark in the upper right corner of the screen. And that includes what I was talking about, the information on the test levels. You can either search by section to get more information, or if you're just looking for something like test levels, I can start to type that in the search bar and find that there. So again, either way, whatever works for you, the knowledge base or emailing us, we are happy to help you and are excited for you to get in and use SLP Toolkit.